So you got your first render. For starters, we wanna say thank you for supporting Exodus. You made a great purchase. In this video, we're gonna talk about everything you need from start to bottom to get this set up and going. So everything we cover in this video is gonna be super critical for your success using this render in the field. So be sure you tune in to the end. So the very first thing we wanna mention is a lot of people are buying these cameras, not only because they want a great cell camera, but they want a camera with a great warranty. So with our warranty policies, it's critical that you go in and register this product on our webpage. So you need the basic contact information and you're gonna use the serial number located inside the door to get this product registered. And one of the questions that we get a lot is, you know, if I bought this on back order, what do I use for the purchase date? Um, if you waited longer than 30 days to actually put your hands on the physical product from the time that you've purchased, that's okay. We're pretty easy going about that. And you can just simply use the date you received the camera. So if you purchased this in, in May and it was on back order, you didn't get it till July, just use the July date for your registration date. So now you've read your user manual, you've registered the warranty on your product, now we get to the fun stuff. We get the activation. So to activate your camera, all you're gonna use is your mobile phone, you're going to download the Scout Tech app, which is found in Google Play or the Apple uh, iTunes app store. Download that, create an account, and go through the auto registration. We're not gonna cover that in full detail here. We have another video, which is in the description, uh, where we go through that step by step, but it's super easy to figure out. So you got your camera registered and activated on Scout Tech. The next thing you need to do is buy a data plan. And there's a lot of different plans ranging from a dollar a month plan all the way to $120 for a five gig plan. So depending on how many cameras you have uh, set up on a single plan, uh, it's gonna dictate you know, how big of a data plan you actually need to get. So with that, the billing is month to month. There's no annual subscriptions or no annual contracts, no annual plans. You can turn these things on and off as you see fit. One thing to note with that, at the end of the season, when you wanna deactivate your camera, keep in mind that all billing is done 30 days ahead. So if you wanna deactivate that camera and have the billing stop in January, you need to do that at least 30 days ahead because come December 1st, you're gonna be billed for January. So you have the camera activated, you have your data plan bought, you're ready to get this thing to use. One of the most important things with cell cameras comes to power sources. So with the Exodus render, you can run an external and internal power source. This is a 12 volt product, takes eight double A's. We strongly recommend Energizer Lithium Batteries. If you guys wanna learn more about why we recommend that, there's a, just, there's a link in the description below that talks about different types of power source. When it comes to external, it's highly recommended for any cellular camera that you're running external power. And we have a great product or a great offering with our SP18. With the SP18 comboed with the render and internal batteries, it's easy to get a entire season in the field without having to bring this thing back in and change, change power sources. So after you figured out what power source and how you wanna power this unit, the next thing we wanna mention is SD cards. So the Exodus is compatible with 64 gigabyte SD cards, but if you're using a 64 gig card, you need to make sure it's formatted to FAT32 and not XFAT. So for ease of your use, we recommend just an SDHC card, which is up to 32 gigs, you don't need anything crazy uh, as far as writing speed, a class four or a class 10 will suffice. And because you can manage all of this remotely through your phone, there's no need to buy a giant card. In fact, with the majority of cameras that we have out in a fleet between uh, all the guys here at Exodus, most of us are running eight or 16 gig class 10 cards. So we have all the basics kind of squared away. We wanna talk about the recommended settings to get to know your camera. When you first get started, there's a ton of different options available to customize uh, your user settings, um, your different type of camera modes, your trigger delays, your upload frequencies. There's just a ton of customizable ability you have with this camera. And at the end of the day, that's a great option for anyone that's buying this camera because there's so many different applicable use cases where you can maximize the efficiency of this. But to get started, we recommend just running photo mode, maybe put it in a two shot burst, if you're using this in season, we recommend real-time uploads. If you're using it out of season, or even in a scenario where you know you can't hunt in the next 24 to 48 hours, uh, we recommend 24 hour upload frequencies. And that's gonna do a couple things for you. One, it's gonna group your photos and all come over at once where the camera's only connecting to the Verizon network a single time, and it's gonna increase your battery life. So it's definitely gonna save on power where the camera's not connecting, you know, every time it takes, takes a picture, it's just grouping those photos and uploading them all at once. And because you have the ability to manage that remotely, 
if the season comes in or if you're you know in a period where you know you can't hunt and you have the weekend coming up and you think you can hunt or you want to change that from 24-hour uploads to real-time uploads you can simply do that right through your app so now you have this thing set up you've played with it some it's time to put it in use in the field we definitely have some recommended uh, tips to follow as far as getting this thing set up and being efficient with hanging on the tree and getting the heck out of there so one of the things that you always have to be mindful of is your, your power position switch. So when you're turning this camera from off to set up or set up to off or off to on, the key thing there is always positioning that power switch from the off position, re regardless of if you're going to set up or on. So you never wanna take this camera directly from set up directly to on. You always wanna stop at that uh, off position and let that camera power down for a few seconds before you're turning it on or before you're turning into setup. And we say that because the position of this switch is gonna dictate how long this module, the cellular module stays active. So in that setup mode, um, the camera knows which position that switch is in and it's gonna allow that module to stay active for up to 15 minutes. So when you're turning it from setup directly to on, that module is gonna stay active until you get your first 24 hour status report and it's gonna be really, really hard on your battery. So we have this thing strapped to a tree. You're anticipating getting pictures sent to your phone. You're excited. The last thing you want to do is set this thing up and then have to come back to it. So in the urgency of getting these things set up correctly, we recommend a couple of things. One is when you first strap this to a tree and maybe you're in an area that you're unsure of the signal strength, we want to turn this camera to setup. We want to turn it to setup. We want to let that cell mod module power on and we want to watch the signal indicator at the top of the screen. So as that camera is in setup, you should see a couple messages come up across the LCD screen. Uh, home network initializing, um, home, home network registered, status report sent, and then you're going to see um, basically the signal strength displayed on the top middle portion of this L LCD screen. So you'll see several different bars light up, similar to what you would see on your phone that's going to dictate signal strength. As you're in setup or while you're in setup mode, after you get that status report sent, after you verify the camera has signal at its location, the next thing we want to do is make it take a test photo and ensure that you have proper transmission to, to your cell phone. So to take a test photo, all we want to do is press the enter button. As you press that enter button, the camera is going to take a picture. It's going to write it to the card and it's going to upload that uh, to the network and then ultimately to your phone. So while you're in setup mode, just go ahead and press that enter button, take a little selfie picture, make sure that's getting transmitted to your phone. After you have verified your status report, your signal strength and photo transmission to your app, the next thing you can do is take that power switch from setup and we want to turn it to off and we just want to leave it off for a few seconds from the off position after it's been off for just a few seconds we can then go ahead and power it to the on position as you power it to the on position one of the things that i like to do and recommend to do is stay out of the field of view of the camera go ahead and get the camera locked up get um, out of the way so the camera's not detecting you, and then the camera's gonna go through a countdown process. So after 30 seconds, you're gonna see the LCD screen time out, go to sleep. It's supposed to do that. It, um, it's part of the design where that goes to sleep and it conserves power. So as you're stepped off to the side, the camera's gone through its 30 second countdown, the screen has gone to sleep, you wanna check your phone for a status report. In the on position, after the camera gains signal, it's gonna send a status report. After you get that initial status report from the on position, the next thing that we recommend doing is actually physically walking in front of that camera once or twice, making sure that it's taking photos and making sure that it is being uploaded and sent to your phone. Again, the last thing you wanna do is go through this, this process and get this far uh, into it and then leave that camera location and ultimately find out that something's gone haywire. Maybe your cord has come unplugged from your external power source. Um, and you're not getting the pictures that you think you should be getting. So before you leave the camera location, while the camera's turned on, just do a simple walk test. It doesn't have to be anything intricate. Just once, once or twice across that detection area or detection zone is going to ensure that you're getting pictures sent to your phone. So that's a wrap on this video. Just a brief overview for anyone buying and setting up their first Exodus render. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. And if you have any more interest in learning maybe more of any of the topics that we covered in more detail. There's going to be links in the description below that cover a multitude of these topics or talking points in much greater detail. If you want to buy your own Exodus render or learn more about the Exodus render, be sure to click this link right here.